The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons was formed on April 29, 1777, with the goal of eliminating all dangerous chemical weapons from the world. Their headquarters are located in The Hague in the Netherlands. By definition, a chemical weapon is one that uses chemicals created to inflict death, harm, or temporary incapacitation to humans. Chemicals are sorted into three categories of prohibition. Schedule 1 are the most dangerous. These are toxic chemicals or precursors that have essentially no peaceful, legitimate uses and have been used as chemical weapons. Sarin, nerve agents, sulfur mustards, and blistering agents are among the Schedule 1 chemicals. Schedule II chemicals have a few allowed uses and can be used as a chemical weapon or as a precursor to one. Dimethyl methylphosphonate is a Schedule II chemical that is used as a flame retardant, but it's also a precursor for the deadly nerve agent Soman. Schedule III chemicals are produced in large commercial quantities for illegal purposes, but could be used in the production of chemical weapons. Hydrogen cyanide is a Schedule III toxic chemical that is used in mining as well as as the production of synthetic fibers, plastics, dyes, and pesticides. The OPCW has three departments, the Conference of the States Parties, the Executive Council, and the Technical Secretariat. The Conference of the State Parties is the core part of the OPCW and meets for one week every year. Each member state of the OPCW chooses a permanent representative to take part in the meeting. The conference oversees the implementation of the Chemical Weapons Convention and has an equal democratic voting process with no vetoes. The Executive Council is composed of 41 member states that are elected by the conference every two years and meets at least three times a year. It supervises the Technical Secretariat and is responsible for its effectiveness and policies. The Technical Secretariat implements decisions made by the other departments and as described by the convention. It is led by the OPCW director and has about 500 staff members recruited from over 80 states. The OPCW only has jurisdiction over member states and therefore is not a global power for ending chemical weapons. Its goal is to expand and to have every country become a member state so the world is empty of chemical weapons. To motivate countries to join, it provides support and protection to member states against chemical attacks. At the current moment, the OPCW has the potential to eliminate all chemical weapons, but it doesn't have the power to enforce it under its current structure. This can be seen in its failure to limit the use of chemical weapons in Syria and other countries. At the outbreak of the Syrian civil war in 2011, concerns were raised about both the security of Syria's chemical weapons sites and about the potential use of chemical weapons. In July of 2012, Syrian Foreign Ministry spokesman Jihad Makdisi stated, No chemical or biological weapons will ever be used. All of these types of weapons are in storage and under security and the direct supervision of the Syrian armed forces, and will never be used unless Syria is exposed to external aggression. A Syrian defector who worked inside the chemical weapons network alleged that in January of 2012, two senior Syrian officers moved about 100 kilograms of chemical weapons materials from a secret military base in Nasiriya. The Syrian source also described construction of special trucks which could transport and mix the weapons. The United States defined chemical weapons as a red line for Syria and threatened military action if it was crossed. Uh, we have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground that a red line for us is we start saying a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. However, many chemical attacks happened in the following year, with the most prominent being the Gouda chemical attack. The Gouda chemical attack happened on August 21, 2013, and an estimated 1,400 deaths and 3,600 injured by the use of sarin. In response, on September 6, the United States warned that there would be airstrikes against Syria unless it turned over all of its chemical weapons stockpiles and filed a bill giving itself the power to do so. Just because we ignore global problems doesn't mean they'll ignore us. Instead, they become bigger and harder to solve. And sadly, Syria is just the latest example of that fundamental truth. The Syrian government then entered into several agreements for the destruction of its chemical weapons, including its entry to the OPCW on October 14th of 2013.
After its addition to the OPCW, a number of programs were created to investigate the chemical attacks and eliminate Syria's chemical weapons stockpile. The first was the OPCW and United Nations Joint Mission. It was created on October 16, 2013 to oversee the elimination of the chemical weapons in Syria. It established multiple timelines for Syria to follow. Its initial declaration of weapons should be submitted by October 27, and it should have all chemical weapons destroyed by June 30, 2014. It also set short-term goals to achieve by November of that year. First, the verification of Syria's chemical weapons count to ensure the right number of chemical weapons were declared. Second, the identification of key equipment for chemical weapons. Third, making production facilities of chemical weapons unusable. Fourth, beginning the destruction of Category 3 chemical weapons, the most dangerous kind. The operation was successful, but the work in Syria was not done. The attacks continued, and international authorities suspected Syria hadn't declared all of their chemical weapons. In the joint mission, the OPCW only investigated and declared chemical weapons facilities the Syrian government declared, and hadn't investigated the issue at a national scale. The joint mission ended when Syria finished shipping out all its declared chemical weapons on June 23, 2014, but it was unknown how many undeclared weapons still remained. To investigate further, the OPCW created two more teams, the Declaration Assessment Team to resolve the gaps and inconsistencies in the Syrian Declaration, and the Fact-Finding Mission to establish facts around the chemical attacks. Welcome today's announcement that the OPCW is sending a mission to Syria to determine the facts on alleged chlorine gas attacks. Syria must immediately and fully cooperate with such fact-finding, and anybody responsible for such attacks must be held accountable. The declaration assessment team failed to resolve all the problems with Syria's declaration. Therefore, Syria has still not submitted an accurate and complete declaration according to the Chemical Weapons Convention. The fact-finding mission was able to confirm chlorine and mustard gas were used in Syria and submitted its reports to the UN. The mission is still active today and investigates more recent chemical attacks in Syria. The OPCW set up the OPCW-UN Joint Investigative Mechanism to follow up on the FFM's discoveries and determine the perpetrators of the chemical attacks. The mechanism's reports are just starting to be released in 2021 and conclude that the Syrian Arab Air Force used chemical weapons. Chemical attacks are continuing to occur in Syria for the foreseeable future. Even though it's clear Syria tried to hide its chemical weapons inventory and broke the Chemical Weapons Convention a multitude of times, the OPCW has done nothing to punish Syria. This is because the OPCW is a supplementary organization. It can only aid countries who already want to eliminate chemical weapons. Its only goal is to assist Syria, not police it. This goes for any country that's a part of the OPCW. If it wants to break the rules and start making chemical weapons, the OPCW has no power to stop them. A different organization or country might put pressure on them, but it won't be through the OPCW. This threat of chemical weapons has become a recent issue in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The question a lot of Western countries and global governments are posing is whether or not Russia will use chemical weapons in their destruction and invasion of Ukraine. Believe it or not, Russia has signed the Chemical Weapons Convention in 1993 and has claimed to have almost 50,000 tons of munitions that included mustard gas and a variety of nerve agents. Similarly to how the OPCW found the Syrian government responsible for obtaining mass amounts of the accused chemical weapons, they have procedures for investigating Russia as well. However, Russia almost certainly has no fear of a diplomatic fallout over using chemical weapons. Any powerful consequence for a chemical attack imposed on Ukraine would fall short and land on Russia's veto at the UN Security Council. Similarly, internationally shaming Putin and the Russian militants would not be effective. To further emphasize the fact that the OPCW would not have the power to hold Russia accountable if they were to use chemical weapons, simply look at their past with Syria. This is a government that has used banned chemical weapons uh, on its own people in the past. They've done so uh, on Russian territory. They've done so uh, on British soil. Uh, they have supported the brutal Assad regime, which itself uh, has used uh, banned chemical weapons uh, on 
it's people. The OPCW's failure to prevent chemical attacks in Syria forecast a dire situation if Russia decides to begin using chemical weapons. The OPCW must put pressure on international organizations like the UN to punish chemical weapons use and give the OPCW jurisdiction over countries who break the rules. The UN could enforce sanctions and other punishments on them, discouraging them from using chemical attacks. Once the country decides to give up their weapons, the OPCW will be there to guide and reinforce them.